Welcome to our new video. In this video, I will be talking about the principles of discounting cash flows. We have already been talking about interest, composed interest. When we put money in an account and we see what the future value is, we looked at annuities and perpetuities to see what our investments would bring us over time. It created a future value. But now we want to look at the other side. We want to look in the other direction. And what happens there when we have cash flows in the future? What will be their value today? Because we want to know what is the value of a cash flow, for example, that, that I get in 10 or 20 years. We want to understand what we call the present value of all those cash flows. And it's very important in business to understand how good your investment or project is because we want to know are we making a profit or not and the principle of present value of cash flows is very important in that area now let's have a look we can have a number of cash flows like we have here at the end of year one we have five hundred dollars up to the end of year eight we have also five hundred dollars this is a simple cash flow every month we or every year we put there a fixed amount the periods can be monthly can be yearly in our case we're looking at yearly cash flows now what's happening in our example i consider a discount rate of six percent that could be the cost of money for you because we have to see what is the discount rate we are going to use we will discuss that later but let's say we have six percent so basically, the amount that I put there at the end of year one, today it would be 500 divided by 1.06. That's the discounting of the money. We see that money, that $500 we put there, one year from now, today, that has a value of $471.7. So it's less than what we expect $500 today with 6% discount rate has only a value of $471.70. We can do that for the other ones and we see when we go further we divide by 1.06 to the square and the amounts are slowly going down. I will not repeat all of them. You can make this very easy in an Excel spreadsheet by putting the formulas there and we see that at the end of the eight period we see that the five hundred dollars that we put there has to be divided by 1.06 to the eight power and it gives us 313 dollars and 70 cents so we see that the value the present value of those different cash flows can be easily calculated and when we add all of them, we see that the total present value, the present value of all those cash flows together is $3,140.90. Now, there may be some difference if you do the calculations in Excel because I used some, let's say, simplifications. I only took two decimals while Excel and other programs may have a higher precision and there may be some changes on the level of the decimals. That's quite normal when you look at the formulas. The differences should not be very important. Now let's have a look how we can do the calculations of those series of cash flows. What we, we do, we say the present value of the end cash flows that I have is basically a series where I, when I start from the right, I have the last one that I put there, C, divided by 1, because it's the one I put there initially. Then I start discounting. So the cash flow I put there one year later, I have to divide by 1 plus I, and so on. And the last cash flow after N periods, I have C divided by 1 plus I to the power N. And that's a series we can write very easily using a summation because the 
present value of these end cash flows is C multiplied by the sum of I going from 1 to N of 1 divided by 1 plus I to the N power. And basically this is the calculations that we can do very easily. Basically here we didn't put the initial cash flow there. It's possible that we put the cash flow at the beginning. But in our example, I go from period 1 to period N. So that's a small difference that we can consider. Now we can replace this sum when we use some mathematical formulas by a simplified formula. And that formula is 1 plus the interest rate to the N power minus N divided by the interest rate multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate to the power n. So this is a simplification we can use to do this calculation. Let's now have a look at the built-in formulas in spreadsheet programs. Spreadsheet programs like Excel have built-in uh, formulas that help us do for example, financial calculations. There are a lot of formulas that you can use, but this one is typically in the financial atmosphere. So we have the formula that the present value of a series of constant future cash flows can be defined by the formula PV with the first parameter, the rate, the percentage that we are looking at over the period, be careful if we are discounting over shorter periods, for example, months or days, the rate has to be calculated to the period that we are using. So if we have a monthly discounting, the interest rate should be divided by 12. We have n peer, uh, the number of periods that we are looking at. We have the PMT, the PMT, which is the monthly amount, the monthly cash flow I put in the investment. The present value, that would be the amount paid at the beginning. Uh, so that would be an initial investment. And the type, like we've seen in other uh, formulas from Excel, is zero or one. It depends, uh, do we make the payment at the beginning or at the end of the period? Typically we take zero, so we do it at the end of the period. That's the formula. Let's have a look what we can do to calculate some of those present values. Let's consider cash flows, the $500 we had before, over eight periods, and we have a discount rate of 6%. So we put everything in the formula, the formula we calculated from the summation, and we find that the present value of those cash flows is 500. The returning cash flow that we have over those months, and then we have 1 plus the 6% to the power 8 minus 1, divided by the interest rate, 6% multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate, 6% to the power 8. And that gives us a total amount of 3,104 point ninety dollars. Now you see when you compare it with the previous calculation, we see there is a small difference, but that's because of the rounding. We can now do the same with the present value formula in Excel or in any other program or in a scientific calculator. So we have the present value. The first parameter is the rate. Six percent, we're discounting yearly, so it's 0.06. The number of periods is eight. We put there the PMT, the monthly payment. We have to put there minus 500 because it's an investment. We're paying $500 every month. The present value is zero. Can be different, but in our case it is zero. And we discount at the end of the month. And we see we find exactly the same amount, $3,104.90. So basically, this is how we calculate present values from a series of constant cash flows. Those are basic calculations that we need to define other parameters 
and to identify how good our project is doing. Present value is very important because it translates the future cash flows, the future revenues or profits that we get from the project. We can compare that into today's value. That was it for this video and we will be looking forward to one of our next exciting videos. Thank you and bye bye.